more people wanted number two in black than any other. And if you want to know what my choice was, well, my choice was actually the gold ones, number one. I didn't want to say at the time because I didn't want to influence anybody. I got a call this morning from Uncle Jake, and he said he wants the gold ones as well. So we're going to stick the gold ones on, and the idea is when he comes over for coffee and he sees it, if he doesn't like them, well, I, I can just very quickly swap them out with something else. But there's something else that I got to mention here. If you're in the Winnipeg area and you're thinking to yourself, well, we've got Grandpa and Grandma's old clock. It hasn't run for 50 years. I'll bet you Ron could fix it. Well, Ron probably could, but Ron doesn't want to. Ron's got other things he wants to do. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, that sounds selfish. Well, that's because we're human. I'm human. And we humans are all selfish. And if you think about it, we don't do anything except for a selfish reason. It's because we humans have a selfish nature. No matter what good deed it is, we do it because we know if we don't, we're not going to feel good about ourselves. So <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but it's, if you think about it, we're doing it because we're selfish. We, we want ourselves to feel good. So uh, we do whatever it is. Anyway. Uh, don't go getting all religious on me now here in your comments. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get going here. Now, I never know when I might need some 5 sixteenths washers. So, what I've done is, I found that this little rubber washer and one of these pieces of wood is the exact same thickness. So being just going to be out of sight and nobody's going to see it anyway. And this, uh, this works out just right. Anyway, guess you get the idea. Now you've heard me say this before. Please forgive my big clumsy hands in the road here. You'll remember that from yesterday that two of these was just too small. However, just leave those off to the side. If I take this one and like so, plus a piece of cereal box cardboard, yeah, it's perfect. So I'll just make something up out of that combination. Yeah. Right now I've got the clock laying on its side. The reason for that is because I'm thinking of putting maybe a drop of CA glue right there. Because there's the chance that this could en end up getting flipped up into the uh, pendulum and uh, jamming things up. I think I'll put a little drop of CA right there. I hope I've got this movement in to stay now. I don't see any reason why I'm going to have to take it out again unless I have to. And I hope I don't have to. Now the chains are going to go down through the same holes that they did originally. However, I want them to be adjustable so that the uh, height of the weight can be probably just below the bottom of the pendulum bob. And uh, I want to have a little, a little nail or something in behind each one of the holes so that uh, the chain can be hooked onto it. A little finishing nail will probably work pretty good here. At least that's the plan.
Okay, if I glue those into place, I think it'll be good. Except, those little sharp edges aren't a good idea. Yeah, now these are the ones that the weight hangs on and they have to go to the outside. So that means that I have to take and feed the chain up from the bottom. I think it's going to be all right. The idea is, of course, that you would uh, move these chains back and forth and then hook the link over one of these little finishing nails and uh, yeah, just adjust them back and forth this way until they're just right. Well, let's try it out, see if it's going to work. to be a little bit below the bottom of the pendulum. The pendulum is going to go like so. Maybe this could be a little shorter yet. Yeah, about like that. I think that would look nice. I'll do them both the same. Ah. exactly the same. Now the reason I'm doing them the same is because when Uncle Jake brought the weights over he mentioned how they came down evenly. So uh, yeah. Well let's uh, put the hands on, take this upstairs to where the weights are, hang it up on the wall and see what we got. Oh maybe I better uh, mention how to set this thing. And I want to put in uh, uh, set of new batteries here. These ones here will last about a year and a half. These carbon batteries will only last about six months. Okay, now because I've uh, taken the batteries out, the next thing that this thing's going to want to play is six o'clock. 
So we set the clock to just before 6, like about 10 to 6. And then once I put the batteries in, let's see, go around here. Now you'll notice it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a little tick sound when it gets to the top. Listen. Hear that? Okay, that, that triggers the mechanism to start its, uh, its chiming. Um, so we're going to go around again to about 10 to then we'll adjust the hour hand okay the one's rubbing on the dial so it'll be just before six now when I put the batteries in what should happen is it will chime six o'clock I think these gold hands look pretty good Okay, now I've got to remember these hands are on here. I don't want to accidentally catch them on something and, you know, bend them out of shape. Yeah, I think those gold hands look really good, actually. All right, uh, let's turn it over very carefully here. And we'll put something under here just to keep it from pressing against the green cloth here. Uh, yeah. Now, you know what? I should get my battery tester and check these out just to make sure that they're right up. But I'm sure they are. But we'll check anyway. Okay. 1.621 volts. That's good. 1.621 yeah they're both right up well they better be brand new now mr. and mrs. uncle Jake I hope you're watching this there's a little volume control knob here you can turn it up or you can turn it down right now I have it turned all the way down the lower the volume the longer your batteries will last there's a little reset button right here now when I first put the batteries in, the little computer system in here is going to think the last thing it did was 5 a.m. Another thing you want to remember is that both batteries go with the positive pointing down. I know usually in a something like this when you, uh, you know, usually one battery will go one way and the other will go the other way on this type of thing where there's two batteries involved. Well, this one's different. It's wired up differently. You don't have to do that. They both go this way. Okay, now the clock is running. Don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. Um, and in about 10 minutes, it's going to uh, pass the uh, top of the hour, and uh, it should uh, click over. Now, I may have to adjust the minute hand a little bit one way or the other if it's not if it's not tripping exactly on time. Um, on March the 10th, we're going to be having daylight savings time. So you have to turn the clock one hour ahead. And the, what you do is, let me just turn this over here. What you do is, you take the minute hand, don't, don't adjust the hour hand, you take the minute hand and go ahead one full hour. So you can't go backwards. If you go backwards, it's going to mess up the, the timing, and then you're going to have to uh, uh, take, off, uh, take out your batteries and start again, or press the reset button, which will bring everything back to 5 a.m. Uh, I know you're, you're being hit with a lot of information here. Uh, however, in the, uh, in the fall, when you want to turn your clock back an hour, you don't go back you go ahead 11 hours with the minute hand, not the hour hand. If you change the hour hand, you know, it's, it's gonna, the uh, gong is going to be out. Not the chime. The chime will always be the, okay, but the amount of times that it gongs is going to be wrong. Now, just for the fun of it, let's just see what's going to happen here when we go past the, the uh, top.
Okay, that should be it. Six o'clock. All right, so that part's working all right. Uh, what else can I tell you here? I guess if you screw it up real bad, you can always phone me. Um, okay, let's... Uh, you know what, I'm not going to try and clean up this dial. I'm going to leave that for, for you folks. And that way, if it gets uh, worse than it already is, then uh, uh, I won't feel to blame. Anyway... Yeah, let's take it upstairs. The weights are upstairs and we can, there's a nail on the wall and we'll hang it up there and see what it looks like. See you upstairs. Well, I've had it hanging here now for about uh, a good half hour. And the pendulum is swinging about as far as it's going to swing. <laughs> and it's got about a quarter of an inch distance between the back of the bob and the chains so it just made it in other words you could not have the weights up here because it would likely hit the weights um, yeah it, actually it, it looks pretty good uh, you've seen enough close-ups so you're gonna have to look at it from back there but this is what it looks like hanging on the wall uh, from here I can't see, I can't see the speaker on the top from here at all. Now if I move further back, then I'll be able to of course. Anyway, I think that's it for uh, Uncle Jake's clock. So for you regular viewers, thanks for sticking with me on this one. We'll see you with the uh, big clock project probably tomorrow. Thanks for watching. <laughs>